All right, guys, so for the first workout, there's going to be two parts within the same workout. The first part is 13 minutes. The second part goes from minute 13 to 18. So in the first part, 13 minutes, both partners start on the mat at three, two, one, go. One partner runs to the rower, one goes to the barbell. The guys are rowing 500s, the girls are rowing 400s in this. So how this is gonna work is, one partner is going to do their row, the other partner is gonna do 15 snatches. When they are done, they're gonna switch. Now the person that was snatching is gonna be on the rower. The person that was rowing is now on the snatches. The first round of snatches was 15. The next round goes down to 13. Then it goes down by two from there. It'll go to 11, nine, seven, and five. So the partners are alternating back and forth between row and snatch. So every time you get back to the barbell, you have decreased two rounds worth of reps. So like if I do the 15, then my partner will do the 13, then I'll do the 11. On the snatches, they can be power snatches, they can be squat snatches, they can have a slight press out, the feet can move a little bit, but every rep needs to be full control, stood up before the bar is dropped. Now, the first part is for time, and each partner has to row their three intervals. However, let's say I finish rowing, and my partner's not done with their snatches, and they're just really struggling. If I'm done with my row, I may go help them finish. However, they are not able to go start their row until that set of snatches is complete. Once the row and the last snatch are done on that final round, both athletes will run to the mat, and that is time. There is a 13 minute time cap on this. If someone finishes early, they must wait until minute 13 to start the next part. They are allowed to load their barbell. In the event someone doesn't finish, they will have what is listed as cap plus however many reps were incomplete on the snatch added to every 50 meters incomplete on the row. So let's say that I was on a guy's team, I was supposed to row 500 and I was in my last 50. So I rowed 470. That last 50 was not complete, so that's one rep. Let's also say we were missing two snatches. So that'd be the row rep and the two snatches. So in that example, it would be cap plus three. Now we don't expect many people to cap on this, but it may happen. So now moving on to the second part. Um, and one thing I did just remember on the first part, the athlete snatching must face the rower so the judge can kind of stand between the row and the snatch. On the second part, the athlete's actually going to face forward towards the crowd so their back will be to the pull-up bar. That bar can already be loaded and they have from Action. minute 13 up to minute 18 for both partners to find a one rep max snatch. They're likely not gonna hit the exact same weight. They may not Woo! also take the same amount of attempts. They can take as many attempts as they each need and they can go in whatever order they want. They can go, I go, you go, doesn't matter. They may help each other load and unload the bar as needed. Collars must be on. Huge. No rep is gonna be if they drop the bar before standing up or if they catch the bar at about like eye forehead level so it's not above their head and they press the bar out. That would also be a no rep. Um, and then also if they do a squat snatch and their knee hits the ground. I can't really show you here, but I'm here and then like my knee drops over to the ground. If my knee were to touch the ground, even if I recover that, that's gonna be a no rep. So what you will do as a judge, you will have a score sheet and there will be spots to write every attempt. If someone has a weight on the bar they're gonna attempt, write it down. If they make it, circle it. If they miss it, X through it. When that event is done, you will add both of the partner scores together for one total score. And that will be the max snatch event. 